Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. In this video, and probably the next one, I'm going to talk all about the Antarctica sea ice. The sea ice extent around Antarctica varies tremendously um, from season to season. In fact, the variability is much, much larger than what um, there's ever been in the Arctic. Over the last um, number of decades, the extent of ice around Antarctica has grown roughly about 1% per decade. So a paper was just published um, in the last few days um, examining that 40-year record. And all of the gains in Arctic sea ice extent uh, up to about 2014 when we set a maximum of sea ice extent of 12.7 million square kilometers was the was the average the annual average and that was a record in 2014 since then from 2014 to 2017 that um, record of 12.7 million square kilometers plummeted to uh, less than 10.7 so the average antarctic sea ice extent plummeted over 2 million square kilometers in the space of three years. And it took most of the satellite record duration, it took most of the, the record since, um, the data record since, since 1979 for the Arctic to lose that amount of ice. So I'm gonna talk all about the reasons why I think this is happening. First, I'll talk about the some of the observations, and I'll, I'll talk about the paper that was published. Then I'll give my own views on why I think this is happening and how it all relates to, it relates back again to Arctic sea ice loss, slowing the jet streams and weakening them in the Northern Hemisphere. And that additional heat that's being um, gained by the Arctic, that's causing the temperature Arctic temperature amplification, because the Arctic is getting a lot darker, means that less heat has to flow from the equator to the Arctic. More heat, therefore, is flowing to the southern hemisphere. And over the last number of decades, it's increased the temperature contrast with Antarctica, increasing the, the um, wind patterns and ocean patterns, circulation patterns that circulate around Antarctica. And because things deflect, deflect to the left in the southern hemisphere, that's pulled the ice away from Antarctica, making the extent grow that 1% per decade. But now the heat going into the southern hemisphere is so substantial that it's starting to break that barrier um, of the southern annular mode, and the winds are not being kept away from the continent. They're starting to impinge more on the continent, and they're resulting in the ice decreasing you know, rapidly at the moment. And I think that's the key. Um, so I'll go into more detail of that. But getting back to this uh, curve here, so this is the 40-year um, record from 1980, roughly, to uh, present day. And the, this is the average annual extent in, in square kilometers in Antarctica. So we had 12.7 in 2014. Three years later, we have a record low, of, which is a drop of 2 million um, square kilometers. Okay, so I'll show, I'll go into the details of the paper and this stuff. But first of all, there's something very important that I want to do. And I want to show Shackleton in his natural habitat. And uh, let's see if we can uh, see what he see how he reacts. Hmm. Shackleton is ignoring the shark. It's funny when he first saw this, he. Come on, kitty. When he first saw this. He, he, he literally jumped a foot in the air, you know, jaws coming after him. But he's a quick learner, and he realizes that it's just um, his uh, video partner 
um, trying to mess with them. Anyway, it's pretty hot here. Come on, you gonna? Oh, there he goes. Hello. Okay, we'll leave you alone. Okay. He he's not too. Um, he's not. Uh, he he he's blowing me off. He just wants to uh, sleep. So, cat's prerogative. Okay, so we'll get back to uh, Antarctica. Okay, so this is my Twitter site. Just go to at Paul H. Beckwith. Please follow me, and I follow most people back. And the last few videos, which I released yesterday, I was talking about the Arctic Blue Ocean Zero, which is, I, I'm defining this, the Blue Ocean, no Arctic sea ice. Blue Ocean Zero, you know, is the year um, when there's no Arctic sea ice in September. And then we can say, we can shorten it for BO-0. And uh, one year later would be BO plus one, BO plus two, et cetera, for, for subsequent years after this happens. So uh, I discussed the volume trend of Arctic sea ice and how it's been dropping off a cliff. This is from 1979 on. And how based on this slope and based on some of the other slopes that can happen, we can try to determine when this first blue ocean event will be. But now we're going back to, and, and it, the key thing is, is as we lose more and more sea ice in the Arctic, the Arctic becomes much darker. Snow cover in the spring months is declining at even much, even double the rate that the sea ice is declining at. So these things combined make the Arctic a much darker place. The albedo of the overall Arctic has dropped from an average of about 52% reflectivity to about 48% reflectivity in the last two or three decades, according to Ceres data, that's C-E-R-E-S data, um, this from um, NASA satellites and sensors. Okay, so now we're talking about Antarctica. And this paper that came out is about the precipitous fall in Antarctic sea ice since 20 fell, 2014 revealed. So I've tweeted this, and I will just take you to this paper now, which I got this, which this graph is coming from. So this is a, this is a um, Guardian article that just came out um, recently, so July 2nd, a few days ago, on the precipitous fall in Antarctic sea ice since 2014. Okay, so this, this is um, the plunge. It basically, the average annual extent of ice in Antarctica decreased in four years as much as the Arctic has lost in 34 years. The Arctic gets all the press. You know, um, lots, there's lots of more land in the Northern Hemisphere, lots more people living in the Northern Hemisphere. Right, so often the southern hemisphere gets neglected, so I'm focusing on it here. Now it says the cause of the sharp Antarctic losses are, are unknown at the moment. Only time will tell whether the ice recovers or continues to decline. Okay, but uh, researchers say it shows that the Arctic ice could dis or Antarctic ice could disappear much more rapidly than previously thought. Okay, now keep in mind that sea ice melting does not raise sea level. But losing the white sea ice in Antarctica would mean that the average albedo or reflectivity of Antarctica would greatly decrease. Therefore, there would be a lot more solar heating in the solar summers because the dark ocean water absorbs a lot more sunlight than the white ice surface. So again, there is a lot of variability here, but the variability seems to be increasing. Now, I've talked about this in terms of climate systems in the past or any systems in general where there is a critical slowing down in the response time of the system. What this means is instead of a quick you know, turnaround from in positive to negative, positive to negative, there's a slowing down in the response time. So the swings go, the positive swings go much higher and the negative swings go much higher. This is often the case before a system tips over into a different state. This is a case where you have a very strong nonlinear change, um, which we could, like a phase transition. I, for example, from water freezing to a solid to ice, 
and then melting back to water. Okay, that's the phase transition. And when you pass the phase transition, you can get this criti critical slowing down before you swing into this other state. And often these changes can be irreversible. So, of course, the sea ice spreads over enormous areas and has major impacts on global climate system, weather patterns, etc. So losses in the Arctic are linked to extreme weather at lower latitude, right? Heat waves in Europe, etc. You know, slowing of the jet stream, uh, very cold winter in North America. You know, it all depends on, on the slowing of the jet stream, the increase in amplitude of these Rosby waves, um, and the, so the troughs and ridges go much more, are much more, um, they travel much more, dis much greater distances in latitude, and they can get stuck in place, creating these persistent extreme weather events. So, but of course in the Arctic, the loss of sea ice is tracking the rise in global air temperature, right? The two poles are very different. The Arctic is an ocean surrounded by continents, and is exposed to warming air. Antarctica is freezing continents surrounded by oceans and is protected from warming air by a circle of strong winds. Okay, as long as it's protected by this circle of strong winds, then we've had an increase of sea ice in, the, in Antarctica, about a percent per decade. My argument now is that the ridges and troughs of these jet streams are so distorted and so amplified that they're breaking through this shield, this, this circle of strong winds shield, they're impinging into Antarctica, they're affecting the, e -ice, the, sea, the Antarctica sea ice, and they're basically wiping it out. Okay, um, so we've got a 40-year record, and I'm going to look at the paper, um, this paper that was just published. The, the single author is Claire Parkinson at NASA's JIS, Goddard Space Flight Center. Goddard Institute of Space Science, GISS. Okay, she says, we don't know if that decrease is going to continue. I think it will continue if my mechanism is right of the jet streams breaking through this wall of, of which is circling Antarctica, this wall of strong winds. Only the continue, you know, time will tell. The Arctic's been a poster child for global warming, but recent sea ice falls in Antarctica are far worse. She's been looking at this stuff for more than 40 years. All of us scientists were thinking eventually global warming is going to catch up in Antarctica. It looks like it's happening big time since 2014 in terms of, of the sea ice. Westerly winds surround the continent mean that Antarctic sea ice doesn't respond directly to global warming average around the whole planet. Yes, but these westerly winds, this shield around Antarctica is being broken as, as I'm showing in, in um, this series of videos. You know, climate change affects the wind, so is the ozone hole and short-term cycles like El Nino, right? There's lots of other things that people have tried to invoke to explain the growth of Arctic, Antarctic sea ice in most of the 40-year record and the recent decline. In 2014, something flipped. The sea ice decline. Now scientists are trying to figure out exactly why this happened. So I'll go into into my um, theories and views on this very soon. Um, you know, and it's it's this is another thing that's that's taking scientists completely by surprise, changing the picture completely. You know, now sea ice is retreating in both hemispheres. That means darkening of both hemispheres. That means polar amplification in both hemispheres, where whereas before it was mostly just in the northern hemisphere. Um, and this data is, it's used, microwave satellite data is being used, so passive microwaves. Okay, so passive microwaves are emitted from the surface, they're detected by the satellite. Um, they can be detected night and day, and certain wavelengths of microwave or frequencies go through clouds, so they can detect it in all types of weather conditions. Um, sea ice expands in winter, retreats in summer every year. Um, the biggest single year fall was in 2016. El Nino boosted the warming. You know, rates of decline after 2014 are three times faster than the most rapid melting ever recorded in the Arctic, and so on. So I'm going to go into the details of, of this uh, paper. Um, this, uh, I'll, I'll go to the source of the science and, and bring it to you. Thanks for listening.